Well, uh, hello everyone. So uh, the uh, sheet metal working, and in part one, we mainly we talk about cutting. But uh, some example of sheet metal uh, forming. Uh, a good example is uh, car uh, bodies. So, uh, for example, the main um, structure or the main frames of the uh, a car or we can call it chassis frames. It's made by sheet metal forming. The structure like these frames also made by sheet metal forming. So main structure. And the exterior bodies like, let's say this part, the exterior body, or some people call it skin parts. They are all made by um, sheet metal forming. So something that you see every day, a passenger cars, as you can see from this image. So if you exclude engine tires and the mechanism, you see the rest are made by sheet metal forming. And one big reason is with sheet metal forming, uh, the process is fast and uh, um, the cost relatively is low, uh, and the accuracy used to be bad, but with advancing technology and tools, now the accuracy is very good. By bad, I'm not sure if uh, you have a chance, like you had a chance to see a very old car, sometimes you see the gaps between doors and the body, uh, but like I like this um, advertise for Lexus 1992, it is on YouTube, you can watch it later, but let's watch it together now. Every Ford sedan is supposed to do well in the fast lane. But what about these lanes? At Lexus, we've achieved extremely tight tolerances between all major body panels. So not only does the ES300 look like it's put together well, it actually is. Together well. Well, Lexus maybe should uh, pay me some money because now I'm advertising for them. So in this uh, video 1992, it's an old video from YouTube. Uh, that's why the quality was low. It's it shows like the achievement of uh, very tight tolerance. As you heard, uh, the guy was saying that the tight tolerance uh, and and the ball could roll between like the gaps between the different parts, which was a big achievement. So just to show off the uh, accuracy that they could get for their brand, Toyota could get for their brand, Lexus. Anyway, so my point is with sheet metal forming, uh, we can get uh, good uh, accuracy, all right? Uh, but what are the range of parts that we can um, basically work with um, basic, uh, this process? So we can go with a very thin uh, sheets, such as like aluminum beverage, which is uh, a quarter of uh, millimeters. Hopefully you guys watched the video that I sent you for um, like at the very beginning for the beverage can, how they are made. For uh, a computer, and the, like exterior, the case and the inside panels, uh, usually the thickness is around uh, one millimeters. So in the range of one millimeter. And so for airplane, uh, again, similar to a car, many parts are made by a sheet metal forming. And uh, these are in a range of 2.5 millimeters, depend on different parts to six millimeters, let's say for the wings maybe. And even for like higher thickness, uh, such as the subframe, uh, for this uh, chassis, it's a range of six millimeters, four to six millimeters, depends on the car or different part of uh, basically uh, the chassis. So in general, we can say with sheet metal forming, a range of, uh, I will write it down over here. So 0 0.1 to six millimeters is a common range. So common, range of 
sheets that uh, use this method. A 0 0.1 millimeter, it's more likely a category of foils and very thin, uh, but it is achievable. And usually we say zero, like a quarter of millimeters is something that's a good start. Six millimeters also is, is good, but going to higher thickness, maybe we don't get the accuracy that we want, but it doesn't mean it's not possible to do that. Also, um, keep in mind if you have, let's say, a plate, and let's say I have a plate like this one. Again, just to know the terminology when we talk about different manufacturing uh, processes now and in future, if let's say the thickness of this one, let's call it T. So we say uh, if T is, uh, let's say in a range of uh, zero point, let me write it like that. Well, let's say it's less than 10 millimeters. We consider it a sheet. But if T is larger than 10 millimeters, we call it a plate. Right? Again, it's, it, it varies. It depends on other size of the, this sheet. But just as a general rule of thumb, usually uh, the thickness less than 10. Sometimes people say less than 8 millimeters. We call them sheet. Um, bigger than 10 millimeters, we call it a plate, all right? So, uh, some general overview of sheet metals. Uh, so here I call it sheet metal working, um, mainly because we defined sheet metal working to two main categories. One is cutting, and another one is forming. So we cut a piece of, let's say, a sheet metals. Uh, maybe we punch it, or we bend it and we form it to different shapes that we want, right? Two main categories. So uh, with any of these process, uh, so we were wondering if the property of the material changed. So we know that uh, doing these things, the geometry changes. So change in geometry. But changing geometry, like in sheet metal forming, does not change the mechanical properties that much, except we can say, depends on the forming process, the strength of the uh, part will change. But here, we, we say the flexural strength, which if you recall from MEC360, it is E module of elasticity multiplied by I will change. Just as a good example, uh, let's say if I have, um, maybe I draw it something over, over here for you guys. Let's say if I have a plate like this one. And here the other side. All right, so with this plate, so it will be very easy for me to, to bend it. Maybe like that, right? Say so easy to bend. Of course, depend depends on the uh, um, the thickness. But the same things without changing the material. If I change the geometry to let's say something like this shape, maybe I slightly bend the edges. So you can even test it with a piece of paper. So you will realize that uh, now you need a lot of force to actually bend these things. 
Oh, hopefully I could draw the rest. Yep, something like that, right? And now with like edge being bent, now I need a lot of force to bend it, right? More difficult to bend. And you know why? Because we change the uh, moment of inertia, right? Because we change I. The material is still the same, but uh, the uh, uh, moment of inertia for the area moment of inertia has changed, right? So if you forgot, I is area moment of inertia. So as general again, sheet metal forming, not too much change in mechanical properties, except flexural uh, strength or flexural rigidity, which is E multiplied by I, will change because the geometry, the geometry of cross section is changing. Like here, again, if I go back to my document camera here, like this is, this, this plate, the thickness is one millimeter. I got it from like inside a big server, a computer. Uh, so the thickness is one millimeters. Now with this bending and different shape at different part of these things, like all this punch and everything, it's, it's impossible to bend it. While for one millimeter aluminum uh, plate or a sheet, I don't need any force, right? Basically with my like fingers, I can bend it. But this one, it's, there is no way, and I'm not pretending to, to bend it. Uh, even you need a, maybe a big machine to deform it a little bit, All right? And that's why, that's because the uh, cross section has changed. And when we change the cross section, the moment of inertia for the cross section change, and we say EI is changed, All right? So, and that's about the change that we can say. And also, if you recall, we said for each uh, manufacturing processes that we will study, we need to consider uh, the main four attributes. Hopefully you guys still remember. Uh, let me write it down here. The four attributes of each manufacturing processes. So manufacturing, I just use F MFG and processes, All right? So if you recall, we said there are four. Who remember those four? Maybe I should have one. What do you guys call it, eye clicker? I hate those eye clickers. Who remember the four attributes? Cost. Cost, good, what else? I need your help because I, I cannot remember myself. Maybe I need coffee. Quality. Quality, all right, second one. So yeah, we remember cost was one thing. Uh, quality, I agree. Also rate, yeah, I just remember rate. How fast we can make something, how much does it cost, how fast we can make it, how good it is. So quality. And what else? Also we said, well, how flexible is the process? If I change the geometry, how easily I can uh, make the new part? So flexibility, right? And as I said at the very first session for each manufacturing processes that we are gonna study, we are gonna look at this one and we are gonna compare, right? So, so far we talk about one process in module two, which was machining.
So for machining, I remember we said the cost is relatively high because we need a steel worker uh, to work with a lathe or with a milling machine. The rate is low. Usually it takes time to machine something nice, but the quality is good. We are happy with the uh, surface quality and the accuracy, basically. And the flexibility is high because if I change the geometry, that's fine, no problem. If I change the diameter of the, let's say, cylinder that I'm cutting, no problem. I can just adjust it quickly. But what about the, uh, the new process that we're going to study, the sheet metal forming? So if you watch the videos, the short videos before lecture, so sheet metal forming involves making some tools. We call them die, right? So that we can form the shape that you want. And so it's, it immediately tells us that the flexibility is very low because if I change the geometry, it means I have to change everything. So I have to change the tools. I have to recalculate the forces for the punch that I want. So the flexibility is low there. Uh, so I cannot just go one day and say, oh, let's change this radius to five millimeters instead of six millimeters. Uh, the cost is low because once we have the tools, the die and everything, then uh, it's low maintenance, low energy usually, and it's it low cost, considered low cost. That's why many car manufacturers for all those parts, car parts, they use this process. The rate is high while we have the, when we have, let's say, the, the, the dye, so we can immediately and with a very fast uh, rate produce lots of parts. And quality, similar to machining, we can say good. And don't forget when we say quality, we are talking about two things always. One is the surface finish, and another one is the dimension accuracy. All right? Or the tolerance. Whenever we talk about quality, like unless we add something else, which later we will see, we talk about the strength and other property. But these, these two process, machining and sheet metal forming, they don't change the mechanical property. Uh, while later we will see forging, when we forge something, we change the crystal and the the grain size, and you saw in module one, when you change the grain size, the mechanical property changes. But here, the surface and the dimension accuracy, the dimension accuracy, we can see that these two, uh, we can say sheet metal forming gives us a good, uh, basically, quality, all right? So, so far, and, and we will see as we add to these, uh, to our knowledge of uh, different, uh, Manufacturing processes, we will complete this table and we'll come back and maybe we modify some of these as well. All right. So is there any questions? So just a quick question. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Right. Um, so didn't we just say that uh, like bending would change the kind of like mechanical properties like the uh, flexural rigidity? That's correct. But remember, we didn't change like the, like the, for example, E, or we didn't change, oh, okay, line, okay. right? We, we changed the geometry, and when we change geometry, the, yeah, you're right, the flexural rigidity or flexural strength has changed, right? But here, the quality that I'm talking is about the crystal or grain size and the actual uh, quality of the material itself. Right, right, that makes sense. Thanks. Right. Correct, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Your name correct? <laughs> yeah, you're saying it right. Thanks. Okay. Are you bored of the lectures? I remember you sent me an email about it. <laughs> boring or no? It, it was you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was me. Um, no, no, no. It's uh, lectures are going fine. I mean, it's not ideal, but uh, but it's it's good so far. All right. Yeah. I know. I wish we were in the, the physical in-person classes because then I had a chance to bring all these tools and stuff. So I show you guys so you could see it. But you know, this is what it is. We have to uh, make it do. All right. So. Um, quick question as well. Um, at the top here, you 
you have the arrow set to change in geometry. Is that referring just to the forming or to the cutting as well? Uh, that's a good question. Grant, right? Am I saying your name correct? Garrett, yeah. Garrett, okay. Garrett. So that's a good point. Uh, it, it refers to forming. With cutting, we don't change like the uh, moment of inertia or anything else, right? You yeah. just change the size. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. So Garrett was right. It is the change in geometry, of course, happens in both of them, but the change that we are referring to is, uh, is change that we make and we change I, right? Okay. All right, so with that introduction, this is the objective that we wanna achieve in this module. So first, we wanna identify the parts that are made by sheet metal forming. So one of the purpose that I had for you guys, I asked you at the very beginning to do that start quiz, uh, and I forced you to watch all those videos was, I wanted you that when you look around uh, like the parts that you see from simple parts to complex parts from a parts like in a car. So start thinking about uh, the way that they are made and the manufacturing process that or processes that has been used to uh, have been used to make those parts. All right. And as you realize, some of those questions were uh, a bit vague and it was intentional because later, as you will see, when we study like the different aspects of each manufacturing process, you realize that why we have to make something in a specific way. And the attributes is one big factor. So that's the first objective. So again, I want you to uh, realize when you're looking around, so you see, oh, this part has been made by sheet metal forming or by cutting, which will get to that. The second part, the mechanism or the uh, mathematical part, so we basically, we need to calculate how much force that we need to cut something or to form and bend something. Um, that's the second part. And the third part, it's a, a phenomenon which is called a spring back. So in theory, everything is easy, but in practice, let's say if I have, let's say I have a cylinder and uh, this cylinder, Let's say I want to has a radius and I want to form, let's say a, um, a sheet that I have with a certain thickness, right? So ideally I want to, let's say, form these things to get to this radius. This is what I want to get, a radius, let's say R. But in practice, after I bend it and I release it, uh, it's, it's gonna spring back maybe to a bigger radius, maybe this one. Now it's a bigger radius. And so we'll call it larger radius. And this one intended Radius. This is what we wanted, but that was what we got. And this phenomenon is called spring back. So we need to calculate how much a part is going to spring back because it uh, gives us an idea how to design a die or how to design the tools to over overcome these spring back. Otherwise, the part that we ended up getting uh, it's going to be different than what we initially want. So these three, uh, then objective, uh, realize the parts that are made by sheet metal forming, the math around calculating how much force I need to bend something or to cut something, and uh, the spring back concept, how we can calculate it and how we can avoid it. All right. So, this is more like terminologies that we use uh, in sheet metal forming, and you should be familiar with it because later if you go to a factory, um, people are going to talk about this. And you need to know when they say, for example, blanking or punching or 
V bending, what they are talking about, right? So two main categories in, uh, in metal working again. One is cutting, A, and another one is basically forming, which is obvious, right? So in cutting, uh, we cut the sheets, that's obvious. Um, if the edge that we are cutting is a straight, so a straight edge, it is called uh, shearing. So basically like, like this one, just a straight cut, okay? Or some people just simply say cutting, but shearing is more, is more uh, common name people use. Blanking and punching. Uh, so let's say you have a, a sheet. Maybe if I draw something for you here so you can remember. Like the name implies what we mean. Let's say I have a plate here and uh, let's say I maybe get a circle out of it. Maybe let's say a triangle. Something like that. So if my design is in a way that, okay, let's get that one done. And let me, I'll do a little bit of artistic work for you. Okay, that's about it, that's about it here and yeah. Okay, so. Very simple, if we say that this is uh, basically our, let's call it a scrap. And these are the main parts. So this is a scrap, we just throw it away or we uh, melt it. And this is the main parts. So this process, we call it uh, blanking. Oh, maybe I use red, so you know. No, not that one. Red. Okay. So it is then blanking. But if we switch these uh, two, uh, let's say our design is in a way that these are the basically scrap. Let me to, because later when you study it, oops. Okay, let's say these two parts. These are the scrap. And This one is the main part. We call the process punching. We basically punch out uh, the parts that we uh, don't want, right? So this process, we call it punching, right? Hope it's clear, so it's very simple. So forming, forming again, we uh, categorize it to two main categories. One is bending, like here, bending, and another one is a stamping. So what's the difference between these two? Maybe these two shapes here can explain this for us. So the first one here at the top, like this one on the, at the left, we call it a stamped part. And this one we call it a form part, or a part made by forming process. So the main difference between these two is the stamped part is, um, first of all, we can say it is all at once, like the process is all at one step, or let me write it, one step. And also it involves curved edge. While the forming process, uh, it is multiple steps. 
like for each side we bend it separately it's not at once maybe and uh, usually it involves a straight edge all right uh, i just have a question go ahead um you're using forming uh like as the term for that but forming is what we're just calling these processes overall like there's bending or stamping uh, yeah forming we um, we that's a terminology we use for all but usually the stamp part we uh, uh, we we call the parts that has been uh, formed at one step and they are forming like for curved edge but all of them we call them uh, forming okay some some people or some books maybe use different terminology again if you see some people they separate forming from stamping but all of these are under category of uh, stamp, uh, sorry, forming, because we are changing the form and shape of uh, a part or a sheet metals, all right? So, and, and again, this is more, yeah, go ahead, Ahmed. Uh, quick question is, what's the difference between sheeting and blanking or punching? So see here at the top, shearing, it involves a straight edge, like this image that I show. You have a straight edge, you cut it. It's called shearing. Blanking and punching, I showed it in this example. You have a sheet, right? You cut out two like shapes, one triangle and one circle. If the triangle and the circle, like this red one I write by red here, is your main parts. So you keep this one and you toss out the, the rest. This process is called blanking, okay? But if, the main part is like this pink one that I write by pink. The main part is this, this sheet and you punch out like this triangle and this uh, uh, basically circle and you toss them out, you call this process punch. Okay. All right, guys. Is it clear, Ahmed? That's fine. Thank you. Okay. So I guess it was Puri you asked about forming. Is it clear now? Yeah, I just, uh, I'm wondering why we have forming with bending and stamping, but then we're separating stamping out from that. Yeah, uh, so uh, we, we, we can say, again, in one way to categorize this, that bending and stamping, they are part of forming. But if you see in a different book or different on internet something different, that's also acceptable. But in general, it's common to say that the stamping and bending are ca under category of form. Okay. Okay. So, and, and bending usually, uh, is that we have different way of, uh, or form of bending. Again, one of those video in pre-lecture activities showed you different forms that we can get, but edge bending and V bending, which I uh, sort of, I showed here in this two image, like V bending, you can see it at the bottom here left, and edge bending are two very common bending process, okay? So the tools that we use usually for sheet metal warming, for, uh, forming are very simple. Uh, we um, call the moving part punch, like this is the punch, and the fixed part, the die. Die is the part that we use for shaping it. It can be a very complex closed shape, or it can be a very simple die uh, to bend something, curve something, and so on. So for cutting the same, we, people call it either punch or knife is more like common word, sharp edge to uh, cut, let's say a plate or something. Cutting can be like uh, all at once, all at once, like uh, when you punch something, let's say punching a hole out of a sheet. We call it parallel or all at once, or it can be uh, locally and serial. By serial, we say we start from one point, like when you do the scissorings, uh, like you're cutting with the scissor, you don't cut all at once. You start at one point and then you find your way through the shape that you want. All right. Let's do some quick calculation, very simple calculation. So, uh, how much force we need to cut? let's say this is a straight edge, a very simple problem. 
And my objective is finding out this force. Okay, so we know the process of cutting happens when a crack forms and the material start tearing off. If you recall, again, in the second session, when we talk about material, uh, we said usually the cutting and removing material happens when we, uh, the stress gets to the ultimate uh, strength of the material. But here, since it involves shearing stress, so we can say that stress must reach to ultimate shearing stress. or strength. Which usually we show it by S U T. Ultimate tensile strength of a material. All right. Um, oh, sorry. This is for uh, shearing, right? So for shearing. Yeah, no, no, I was right ultimate shearing strength of the material, all right? Now, um, who remembers that if I want SUT, what is the relation between SUT and, or maybe I'm just using the wrong terminology here. Um, let me recall, shearing strength, let's start for simplicity, let's call it, yep. S U T and this one ultimate strength U T. All right. I guess my uh, Mac three six zero maybe knowledge gets also rusty. So this is the ultimate tensile strength of a material. And SUT, this is the ultimate shearing strength. Anybody remembers there was a relation between these two, between shearing and tensile strength. There was a number here, probably. One. Go ahead. A half. Ryan, you, you you wanted to say yeah. something? Well, sorry, it's usually a half. Ah, half. That's all right. Good, good memory. So if you recall this number, either was half or uh, another number, who remembers? Five, seven, seven, right? So if you remember, recall, this was uh, if you use, um, Tresca criteria. And this one, if you use one misses, right? But these two are very close. Let's just stick with the Tresca. So we say the shearing, ultimate shearing strength of a material is half of its ultimate uh, tensile strength. Ultimate tensile strength, we can find it uh, from tables, depends on the material. The um, SUT, the shearing strength, is going to be half of it. So that's one piece of information that we have. So in order for us to cut this, let's say this simple example, we have like the cross section is BH, this uh, sheet. Uh, we need the stresses to get to the uh, SUT, all right? But how much is the stresses when I do the cutting? The type of stress that is going to be in this plate, is it bending strength, uh, stress, or is this shearing stress? Any idea what type of shearing? Stress? Shearing stress. Yeah, it's obvious it's shearing stress. So, in that sense, how can I calculate shearing strength? A stress. Tau. Who remembers the formula that we have for shearing stress? 
it was an f over a right f over a was for kids when you had like mac2 then in mac3 you learn a more complicated formula v q i t so i'm just letting you guys to see if you guys remember that formula so let's quickly see if we can use this formula to calculate shearing stress. So the cross section that we have, right? This is our cross section. Is a rectangular cross section. So this is a cross section that I have. In this cross section, this T here is B. The neutral axis, now probably you start remembering a few things. The neutral axis, the axis that pass through the centroid, right? We can calculate I, moment of inertia, which is 1 over 12 BH3. All right? That's I, moment of inertia. T, the, the, it's not the thickness, it's the width of the part that we're calculating shearing strap. V is the force, F. And what about Q? Who remembers Q? We call it first moment of inertia. Do you guys remember Q? How we can calculate it? I thought it was the first moment of area. First moment of area. Sorry, you're right. First moment of area. So how do we calculate it? Do you remember it? No? Can we say this is the area we want to calculate? And I say Q is that area, which is uh, basically H divided by four, because the whole thing is H, this area that I highlighted is H over four multiplied by B. And the distance between the centroid of this area to the centroid, which is H, sorry, this one was H over two. So let me, Correct that one. So this is h over 2, half of h, and this is h over 4. This is what we call it the first moment of area. So we have the parameters here, and this is the stress when we have a force F in this plane. This stress must be get to this 0 0.5 ultimate tensile. So if then cutting happens, so in cutting, stress become equal to SUT. From here, I can calculate F, which give me one over three B H um, ultimate tensile strength, all right? So this one then is ultimate tensile strength. You can check it later, but this is the formula that we need to remember. This is important. Uh, Go ahead. Can you just say where you got each of those uh, um, uh, variables from? Like from the cross section, you have H and B, and now I'm getting confused of which is going where. Yeah, all right. No problem at all. So you see this is the neutral axis, right? Neutral axis, we said always, is a line passing through the central. So that's the neutral axis. So moment of inertia for a, a rectangular cross section, 1 over 12 BH3. That's something that we can look up the tables. Uh, in this formula, T refers to the width that we are calculating the uh, shearing stress. So that's T, which for us, T here is B, all right? 
So we have I, we have T. V is the force, the cutting force, the shearing force, which the shearing force, we assume that this force F transfers directly to the, this uh, piece to cut it. And now uh, the part that we left to calculate is this Q. Q is the first moment of area, right? Which if you forget Q has this formula, I write it down here, Q is A multiplied by L. Let's say if I have a cross section like this, and let's say this is my uh, neutral axis. If I want Q around the neutral axis, Q is, is equal to A. Oh, we're passing time, guys. We're done in a few minutes. It's A multiplied by the distance L, which L is this distance. All right? That's the definition of Q. Is it clear now? Yes, thank you. All right. So we calculate F. So let me summarize it here. F, so the required force, F is one over three B H U T, ultimate tensile strength, which we, it depends on the material. We can find it from for different material. If you check the engineering book, engineering book, you will see this formula, F 0 0.35, pH ut, which basically they um, round it to 0 0.35, this one over three, right? And how much power you require to do the cutting? So power we need. So because remember always, there are two parameters, how much force we need, now how fast we wanna cut it. And when we talk about the speed, then it's, it's a different story, power, it's gonna be equal to force multiplied by V. Oh, let me write it by different V because we don't wanna confuse with the shearing force. Linear speed of the knife. Linear speed of the knife. All right? Is it clear guys or? You get confused. Are we good? Okay. All right. So let's say if I have a plate, I know the thickness. And this plate, I clamp it, let's say between two, maybe clamp like that here. And now I have a sharp let's say tool like that one which i want to cut it so this is the speed that we we're talking about how fast we want this one to come down we want it to go very slow to cut it then we need less power or we want it to cut very fast all right so that's the linear speed we were talking about and force we just calculate force uh, the amount of force that you need to basically cut these things, F. Okay. So all you need to do, you need to know the, uh, the thickness of the part that you're cutting, which we show it by H. You need to know the width, like the depth of these things, B. And the material, material ultimate strength, UT, that's all, all right? And you use one of these two formula, either way it's okay, but you just realize the first one we calculate, so we just stick with that one. Second one is more like an approximation. 
All right, guys, so uh, we are over time, but we are done with this part. I can stay if you guys have questions. No question? All right, so if there is no question, uh, so I stop recording, but I will stay in the class um, in case anybody has question regarding the project one, the CNC. All right, so I stop recording here and um,